Hello, how is everybody doing? Welcome to Rosonari TV. Uh, make sure you click that like button and subscribe before we get started. We have some interesting breaking news. Breaking news that I want to be cautiously optimistic about. And it is regarding the contract renewal of uh, Leal. Of course, this has been a hot topic for many, many months now. And today, um, a report from Relivo suggests that Milan reached verbal agreement over Leal's renewal, details of salary, and 19 million fine. So uh, let's get straight into it. And let's see what this says. According to a report from Relevo, the Portuguese player's will has always been to continue at Milan because he's doing well at the club and he's very happy living in the city. However, economic factors made the negotiations difficult from the start. Uh, now, there is definitely truth that you can tie to this because we have seen uh, Leao in various interviews talk about how much he likes living in Milan and reports have previously suggested that he wants to continue to Milan because at the end of the day I, I think that just like us he also believes that from a sporting uh, a sporting point, a sporting uh, for sporting motivations. Continuing right now at Milan is the best choice for his career. During the last transfer summer window, uh, Chelsea verbally presented to the Rossoneri management an offer close to 100 million. While in recent weeks, Manchester City also expressed an interest in signing signing him. However, after several positive discussions in recent weeks, there is an agreement between the parties for a renewal that will not be a one year extension, as some suggested it might be. Now, yes, a few days ago there was this idea that maybe Milan would um, renew his contract for one year just one year in order to buy time to negotiate and understand what uh, the best options are for the future. But according to this, it seems like that is not going to be happening. There is rather a big stipula stipulation. Milan will agree to pay the fine of almost 19 million euros that the Portuguese owes Sporting CP after he unilaterally terminated his contract with the club in 2018. And Lao will get 5 million net per season. More contacts will be necessary to fully define the space of agreement, but it is also uh, mentioned that qualifications for next edition of the Champions League could be important as well. All right, so these numbers to me, they make sense. The reason why I say they make sense is because, listen, if you want to buy a player of the quality of Leao, it is going to cost you more than this 19 million fee that Milan seems that they have decided to pay. And, uh, you know, and that definitely seems like it's going to cut in into his salary uh, one way or the other. Five million net per season, probably plus bonuses. And these are probably bonuses that he's most likely going to get based on the on his usual output. So it probably is going to be close to somewhere around six million per season. Um these numbers to me make sense. These numbers make sense. Uh, now, let's remember that no matter what, whoever gives Leao a salary, a portion of that salary has to go to this fine that he has with uh, with um, with uh, Sporting CP. He owes that money to them. Not to Milan, not any other future club that he might be playing for. He owns that money. His own money is has to pay for that fine. So I think this is a good deal. I, I do like this deal. I think this works out. And I really think that right now, Leao, based on his age bracket, based on where he is today as a footballer, making this big jump to, let's say, these huge salaries and these uh, you know, super ultra rich clubs, it's not a good move for his career uh, from a sporting sense. From a sporting point of view, staying at Milan and continuing his experience at Milan in order to learn this craft, in order to get more experience in the Champions League, and and uh, just uh, there's so much more that Lau needs to needs to still learn. He himself said that he has limits, and for example, the fact that he only finds himself comfortable playing in that one position while he's hugging the left, uh, uh, while he's hugging the line on the left, he needs uh, he needs a lot uh, of uh, 
he needs a lot of hours on that pitch still to to elevate himself to the next level. AC Milan is the perfect playing ground for him to do that because here he's already being treated as uh, you know royalty. He is protected. The coach even tells him, "Look, you don't even need to press for the team. Just do your thing." Um, you know, the, the fans want him to stay, you know, that feeling of love between the fans, the club and the player is already there. So the best thing is to continue this uh, relationship, uh, with Lau and to continue his career right now in the present moment with AC Milan. Okay, so having said that, I want to remind everybody, this is not official. This is just a report that came out. Take it with a grain of salt. I would suggest be cautiously optimistic. Uh, remember, verbal agreements mean absolutely nothing in today's world of business. So um, let's see how this develops. I'm very curious to see how this develops. In other news that I think... Uh, I would like to mention today is this link here that I think is very interesting. Reports claim Maldini is in talks with entourage of Lazio star Milinkovic Savic. Again, reports claim. Take it with a grain of salt. Let's see what this says. According to according to what is being reported by Daily Milan. Paolo Maldini and Enrique Massara have already outlined the strategic plan for the coming summer, and on the back of that, their initiation contacts with the clubs and agents to set up future operations. If Milan do qualify for the next editions of the Champions League, then the plan is to make two investments on top players and then sign a third who is younger and has potential. One of these signings will be a midfielder, and Sergei Milinkovic Savic tops the wish list. I am fully on board with this operation uh, sms is one of the best midfielders in italy and it hit it is his turn in his career and i believe he's still in his 20s mid 20s to go to a club like milan uh like milan or like a club that whose ambition is to win the champions league essentially whose ambition is to be top uh, top team in Europe and uh, Milinkovic Savic fits the mold and uh, this player in Lazio has been doing has had great numbers great numbers assists and goals as a midfielder I think last season he finished with 11 goals and 11 assists for a midfielder those are crazy good numbers especially in a league like Serie A uh, if we could land a player like SMS then yes now we're talking business this is not a player that needs to come here and adapt to the system and figure out uh, how to figure learn Italian and figure out how to play in Serie A. No, this is a player that has been killing it in the Serie A for, uh, for a few years now. This here would be definitely a top-level operation if it can happen. He has been with Lazio since 2015, and his current deal expires in 2024 with no signs of a renewal at present. Maldini and Masada have moved in advance and have already made contact with his entourage. Pelegatti, a well-known expert on Rossoneri affairs, also spoke about the Serbian midfielder on his YouTube channel yesterday. How nice it would be, Milan know that to improve, they need three players. In midfield, the name is just that. I, I can't think of a better player in this current moment to come in and replace the void that uh, has been left with uh, with the departure of Kessi. I think Milinkovic Savic is, in my opinion, the number one choice um, when it comes to especially the way Pioli envisions his midfield, right? Um, he likes to have his hybrid midfielders that do the dirty work, but also do the quality work. And um, Milinkovic Savic is a perfect combination of both. Not only he's a box to box, but he scores a tons of goals and he, and he, and he produces tons of assists. If we can land Milinkovic Savic, then Milan will elevate to another level. Definitely 100%. The report states that the cost would be 40 million, but the treasure of revenues that would come from the Champions League would also come to the rescue of Maldini Massara. 40 million, that's peanuts. That is peanuts. 
if we paid 35 million for CDK, 40 million for Milinkovic Savic is peanuts. This is an operation that needs to happen. I really hope it does happen. Ladies and gentlemen, if this does happen, Milan will elevate to the next stage of its um, grandeur. Let's put it that way. So uh, this is a very interesting uh, report. Guys, cross uh, fingers and hopefully it is true. Okay, the last thing I'm going to be touching on is uh, the possible formation, the probable formation of tomorrow, which uh, is interesting. And here we go. As you can see, we have Pobega in the front page right here. Sky, probably Milan 11 to face Empoli. Pobega, Rebic, and Shao could start. Pepe Di Stefano spoke live on Sky via Milan News, and he gave some updates on the probable lineup for tomorrow's match against Empoli, starting with a defensive department in front of Mike Magnan, which could consist of Calabria, Chao, who should be preferred over Simon Chiar, Tomori, and Teo Hernandez. Sandro Tonali and Ismail Benacer should remain as a midfield double pivot with Alexis Salamakers on the right uh, instead of Brahim Diaz, while today Tommaso Pubega was tried in the attacking midfield role instead of Kroonich. On the left, on the left there is a doubt too, as Rafa Lau trained separately yesterday. And while he worked with the rest of the group, Pioli does not want to take any risks. And therefore, if he's not 100% tomorrow, he will not start. The probable 11 is Mike Magnan, Calabria, Chao, Tomori, Hernandez, Tonali, Benacer, Salamakers, Pobega, or Krunic, Leo, or Rubic, or Rebic, and Giroud. Okay, let's get into this. This is very exciting. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about that defense. Um, Chao coming in instead of Simon Kier. I really do believe that, especially in the eve of Champions League games, such as a quarterfinal against teams, any team, whether it's Napoli or any team, turnovers are important. Even if it means that you have to sacrifice something in the Serie A in order to get the result in Europe, this is Milan's DNA. This is what Milan has done. This is the Milan that I have seen for so many years. That Before that Champions League game, yeah, you you have to do you do your turnovers, even if that means you're you might risk not playing the best eleven you have in the current moment. But what you want to do is make sure that you have your best eleven for the big game um, on a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night. So um, I do think that Malik Chow has had some good performances. I don't know. I, I do think Simon Kier right now is, though, you know, back to his normal level of fitness so he can provide, you know, great performances with his experience, with his uh, calm, cool, collected nature, um, and also his ability to be aggressive. And he's probably our best defender when it comes to, you know, distribution. Uh, Chow, youngster, 19, had some very good games with us. Of course, the last game that he played uh, uh, with us uh, was against Udinese. That didn't go so well, but this could be a good game for him to come in and get some minutes. Um, uh, Sandro Tonalitz, my business, the double pivot, cross fingers, you know, knock on wood. Hopefully nothing happens to none of these two guys. Uh, Salamakers instead of uh, Brahim Diaz on the right. I think this is a good option since uh, it was reported that Brahim Diaz got a knock in the Napoli game. And again, we need Brahim Diaz to be 100% for the Napoli game. So why risk, uh, um, you know, furthering his injury? Uh, Salamakers coming off a really good performance. But obviously, guys, I don't think we should expect that kind of technical continuity from Salamakers. Obviously, we know what Salamakers offers. He offers that great. He offers that high press. He offers that dirty work, the quantity. He's a quantity player, and we know he's going to offer that. Of course, maybe we're going to lose something as far as quality goes. If, but maybe he is in this moment of form, which he can also be, uh, which he also can uh, be, uh, have continuity in, in the quality department as well. Uh, Tommaso Pobega here, this one here a little bit worries me because Tommaso Pobega hasn't played many minutes in a long time. That attacking midfield role in this team is one of the key components of the system. And, um, you know, I understand it's something that uh, uh, Pioli needs to do, the turnovers. 
But uh, this one here, I'm not really sure. We don't know where Tommaso Pobega is as far as his form. Hopefully, he is in a good moment of form, and this could be a good game for him to produce and uh, to to show us what he's all about. CDK could also play that role. Uh, I am happier that I'm seeing Pobega's name because we haven't seen Pobega in a while, and I think it is only but fair to give these players some minutes. On the left, it looks like Rafa Leao was, tra was training separately. That means that he is feeling some kind of way. Usually when they train separately, mean, meaning maybe there's some knocks that he needs to uh, take care of or fatigue muscle fatigue we, we don't know exactly which means that rebbage could be playing for for um for loud now guys remember rebbage pobega salamakers in that attacking midfield line you cannot expect a ton of quality you know you can expect a lot of grit you can expect a lot of fight but you cannot expect a lot of quality or as much quality as we get when we have an informed layout and an in inform and an informed brahim diaz there protected by krunich so this is something to be expected but also it is to be expected to do these turnovers in order to be 100 ready for the napoli game Yes, uh, if we need to sacrifice something, we have to. We're going to have to sacrifice it um, in the Serie A, and this tells me that Pioli understands that Milan is Milan lives for Europe. Milan's DNA is is uh, European, and uh, the Champions League nights are very, very, very important. For example, I was looking at Napoli. Napoli is playing their best eleven. More or less, they are playing. Their, well, they are going to be playing their best eleven uh, on the day on their Serie A match, while Milan is not. Um, so these are things to to consider uh, regarding the Napoli clash. But going back to the Empoli clash, something that uh, you want to think about is. On the flip side, Empoli is not doing any turnovers. Empoli is coming with their best team, and we know that these teams, mid-level teams, low-level teams, whatever kind of teams, when they face Milan, for them, it is a Champions League match. They come at us with everything. When they tie a game, for them, it's like they won a final of the Champions League. When they score a goal, it, for them, it's like the, the most incredible moment of their lives. It's like, wow, I, I scored a goal against Milan. This is the highlight of my career. So these are the reasons why these games are very, 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 very difficult uh, because of the different motivations of the teams. Milan is going into this team uh, doing turnovers, meaning they're thinking about the next match. Yeah, guys, they're thinking about the next match while Empoli is solely focused on Milan. If Milan can get the three points, this will be a great uh, moment in in our current uh, in the current uh, uh, stage right now, which would indicate that Milan is in, in a very healthy state of mind and also a very healthy state of physicality. So um, let's see how this goes. I'm fairly optimistic that Milan can pull it off, even with the sacrifice of our of our quality players not playing. Uh, another player, if we are going to go full on with these turnovers, I would do a turnover for Giroud since he is the oldest player in the squad and he's the only center forward that we really have that produces, um, that actually produces. Maybe actually this could be a good game for CDK to play as a false nine uh, or Origi. I mean, Origi is being paid all this money and, uh, you know, the fact that he's not in that starting eleven is another indication of how Origi's season is just not going the way that probably he wanted it to go. Uh, it is. It could be a good opportunity for him to step up, especially because we, we will need all of our players for the next game. The positives are that all these players are going to get minutes, and those minutes on the pitch, you know, are going to be helpful because um, they are going to they are going to be these players are going to be playing against Napoli as well. I'm sure we're going to see uh, Pobega maybe, Salamegas for sure, Rebic for sure, um, Origi for sure, CDK for sure, coming in, you know, uh, 20 minutes from the end of these games. So the more they play right now the better it is anyway um i'm fairly optimistic should be a fun game and uh let's see how it goes 
no matter what, guys, always, always, Forza, Forza Milan. Guys, remember to li- click that like button, comment, and uh, subscribe. And yeah, leave us a comment. Let me know what you guys think about these three items that we spoke about today. Leao's potential uh, verbal agreement renewal. Milinkovic Savic at Milan. And tomorrow's starting 11. Guys, having said that, have a great day. Peace out. See you next time. Bye.